Hello and welcome to the Red Jacket Club. My name is Andy. I'm here with my friend Brendan, and this is where we talk Cardinals baseball. Uh, we're here today on April 10th, uh, recording the Brewers versus Cardinals series recap. Going to go over the series from over the weekend and, and talk a little bit about Cardinals news and different things that are happening in, in the Cardinals uh, that are unfortunate, some fortunate things, and and we'll get all into it. But before I do, Brendan, how you feeling? What's uh, what's going on? How you feeling about the Cardinals? Uh, well, yeah, first off, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, before we get into the baseball talk, I will give a little St. Louis uh, sports update. Uh, first is sure. the Battle Hawks, and they had a really cool comeback win. Did you watch that one at all? I wasn't able to, unfortunately. I was down and out with the Rona over the weekend, so I yeah. wasn't watching a whole bunch of sports. Yeah, so actually, this one was the first one that I actually watched, I think, and mm -hmm. uh, they came back in the last minutes, went to overtime, and ended up winning. Uh, so they finally got away from the Seattle Sea Dragons, and now they're 6-2, and two, which puts them in second place behind the D.C. Defenders who are seven and one because they beat the sea dragons. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's looking promising. I'm actually going to next week's game. So I'm really, I'm really excited for that one. Hopefully we'll be tailgating a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so pumped about that. And then the MLS team, St. Louis city, uh, took another loss this week. It was a uh, kind of a rough game. I think possession was like 65, 45 or something like that. It was, uh, or that doesn't make sense. 65, 35. Yeah. Um, but uh, it it was very lopsided, not not a very fun watch to be honest, and uh, we ended up losing that one three to zero to Seattle as well, and we are now five and two, fourth in the um, in the whole league right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's how they're doing. Hopefully they'll pick it up. But uh, other than that, baseball is I don't know. I'm indifferent right now. I mean they. Obviously, could have had a much better weekend. The Brewers are a tough team, and I think we might have underestimated them a little bit coming in. But I still think, obviously, we we are a better team than them. We just got a few kinks to to uh, smooth out. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, there are some kinks to talk about. City, because I did watch that game. Um, I obviously, there's nothing you can do about that first goal. That first goal was amazing. Yeah. Um, the the second two or the Second goal and the third goal just were uh, unfortunate goals. And um, I mean, you literally can't win them all. I know it looked like they were going to <laughs> yeah, with a five game winning streak to start the season. But uh, at the same time, they're playing really well. You said possession was mostly on city side or was it? No, they it wasn't. OK, we did well, not have like any either. Either way. I mean, most most of the team is looking really good. I from what I can see as a casual soccer fan uh it looks like the team's playing really well overall so i i just enjoy watching them which i didn't know if i would going in so if they can yeah. keep me watching uh it's it's certainly it's uh, kind of nice not yeah. ha not knowing everything about the sport you know like we yeah. do baseball because then you don't get mad about the small things you're just like oh yeah dang. I, i'm sure there are more people that are like into the intricacies like we like we'll get into today but at the same yeah. time it is it is tough it's tough watching them lose just because you got city pride but um you know it is what it is uh yeah. But, yeah, we can move on into baseball. Um, there's not much going on in Cardinals news. Unfortunately, there's just some injuries to report and update on. Uh, Packy Naughton left game one after an injury. It looked like a forearm strain, I think is what I read. Um, so they called up Henesis Cabrera to fill his void, uh, the lefty void in the bullpen. Um, and the only other thing uh, in Cardinals news that I could find was Paul DeYoung is continuing his rehab assignment. Uh, he's moved up to AAA Memphis. Uh, and he's going to continue to work out the back issue that he has um, and see how things progress there. I'm not sure um, what that means once he's ready. I would assume that Taylor Motter will go back down, uh, either him or Lopez or uh, Yepes, not Lopez. Um, yeah. But at the same time, not sure what your thoughts are there and with 
Naughton going down, he was pitching pretty well. Um, and Hennis is coming up, and then Paul DeYoung's progression. Got any thoughts there, Brennan? Yeah, so Cabrera, I was a little bit nervous. He came into the game yesterday on Sunday. Uh, he actually did pretty well. He went two-thirds of an inning, uh, allowed one hit, but no earned runs. Kind of did his job, got got um, through an inning, and then another out after that. But uh, not too many thoughts there. I would assume that an infielder would go down, I guess. But then again, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going to happen when Dion gets back. I kind of want him to take his time because... I'd almost rather have Taylor Motter at this point. So, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. Everything is going okay. Those aren't huge deals right now. Yeah. I mean, in terms of Taylor Motter, I think, uh, like, Stanton's the only other player that's hit a ball harder than Motter this season. It's Mm -hmm. like one or two players. So I mean, good. Yeah, and and based on how Motter's been playing, or he played in spring, and he's been up and being at least productive in some ways – I, I don't know. I I kind of would rather have Motter on the on the team as well, but I would imagine he would go down once DeYoung is ready. Unfortunately, um, but yeah, I don't know. Have you heard any of anything else other than like what went on in the games that we should talk about Cardinals wise? Or I couldn't find anything. No, not really. Just yeah, yeah. what what's going on in the games? All righty. Well, we'll get to the games in a second because we obviously do something every week uh, that is fun for us to do we get to closely watch and and talk about this special player um he's been really raking as the season starts and he's really improved over the just short couple of games that he's been playing in the outfield um we're obviously talking about jordan walker and we'll start our segment of jordan walker watch So Jordan Walker has been lighting it up as he has entered the big leagues. Um, and I don't see any signs of him slowing down. You know, uh, he's he's working on a nine game hitting streak. So ever since he's been brought up, he's been hitting. And that actually ties Ted Williams. Yes, the Ted Williams to start the season with nine straight games with a hit. Um, he had another home run in this series, which uh, came on the same day that Nolan hit his 300th. So there was a neat little uh, talking point that he had about that uh, that we can talk about in a second. Um, and then he only he had the only productive at-bat, in my opinion, in Game 3, uh, where he hit a uh, blazing single into center field to score Nolan yeah. Arenado. Um, and, I mean, he's just... I know we, we had debated it going into the season... But at this point, I really don't think that there's any reason to to move him down or get rid of him or give him off. I mean, he hasn't had an off day. Um, so it's it's just crazy how ready this kid is and has been to play at this level. Um, you, what are your thoughts, Brendan, uh, this week after watching Jordan play the Brewers? Yeah, he continues to prove me wrong, which I'm happy about. You know, yeah. according to my calendar that I had him up, he's still got a month and a half in the minors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh Obviously, I'm super happy we didn't do that. And the whole time I've been saying, like, I don't want it to go the way that it could go. Uh, but, no, he's he's proving that he can hit the ball hard at this level. He can make adjustments. Uh, and it just he's got a really good approach at the plate. It seems like pitchers are not afraid of him yet, but they can, they're, they're definitely having to think more. It's not just sliders outside anymore. You know, they have to mm-hmm. think maybe fastball in here. You know, they have to mix it up a lot more than – that they probably thought at first. So yeah, he just continues to prove me wrong and hopefully he just keeps doing what he's doing because he's hitting the ball hard. Yeah. And, um, he's, he's not chasing. He's in the 28th percentile for chase rate. Um, and his whiff rate is 33% or thir- the 33rd percentile. So like he's, he's having really good at bats. He's not striking out. Um, and, He's just he's doing well everywhere, which is crazy. Obviously, his hard hit percentage is way up there. Um, it's it's really sound, fun to you watch. You sound like me. I know, but I, I I saw the graphic today, and just thinking about how much he like because what happened at the end of spring training, and I I do believe in this, and I've heard Jim say it as well. Jim Edmonds, he's like I I, I think he was trying to prove himself a little bit too hard, so he he's back into a sense of. I'm going to play my game and my game's good enough. So I should just contain what I, what I'm doing and, and stay locked in. And he looks nothing but locked in. And like I said, he, he has a neat 
perspective on the game as well, where he, um, the uh, media was asking about his second home run and he turned it around and said, well, Nolan hit 300. And, you know, like it, it really shows how hard you have to work. I mean, I worked hard to get two. He's he's already at three three hundred. So it shows you the the hard work that goes into it and the dedication to the game. And he's like, I can't wait to get there. Um, and it's just he's a he's a special young man, and it's just fun to watch. And this is part of the reason why I'm glad that we're doing this is because we get to closely keep an eye on a player like this who just seems like a, a generational talent already. Yeah, and the only thing I will say is. The same thing in spring training. We would like to see his walk rate go up a little bit. Maybe yeah. they're just throwing him a bunch of strikes. But with that being said, he's he only has a 19% strikeout rate, which is solid. Anything under like 25 is is pretty good, especially for a rookie. So anything under 20 is really good. Uh, so not too much concern there. But it would be cool if you could get that on base percentage up a little bit. I agree. I agree. And I think it'll come. I, and I mean, he's playing in cores tonight, so hopefully he can launch a couple and and uh, and have a good game, have a good series. He keeps having them. So that uh, that is Jordan Walker. Watch um, as we go in to talk about the series that was uh, Brendan. Do you want to recap the series real quick? Uh, let everybody know how the games uh, what the finals were for the different games that were played. Yep, so we'll do our quick little recaps, and then we'll get into the long form. So, game on Friday, uh, this was the Jack Flaherty game. Jack Flaherty continued to show his struggles with finding the zone. He goes five innings, two earned runs, six walks, and only three strikeouts, so that continues to be a concern. He ends up taking the loss there, and the Cardinals end up losing 4-0 to in that one. Uh, on the Saturday game, that was the... Uh, Jordan Montgomery game, which we'll get into him a little bit later. Uh, the Cardinals end up winning this one, 6-0. to zero. Jordan Montgomery goes seven innings and nine strikeouts, so he really did well there. In this game, Zach Thompson makes an appearance and still has yet to give up a run in 2023. At this point, we might as well do a Zach Thompson watch because he's <laughs> really impressing right now. Um, yeah, we won 6-0. That was an awesome game, fun one to watch. But then on Sunday, we dropped the last game, 6-1 to to the Brewers. Uh, the disappointing thing about this one is we were 1-10 for 10 in runners in scoring position, which I know you were going to talk about a little bit. But mm -hmm. this was also the Jake Woodford game, his second start of the year, and also his second loss of the year as he went 4-2 and two thirds with three earned runs and five strikeouts. So the strikeouts were there. But he got hit around a little bit, um, and they're one of their better pitchers, Freddie Peralta, pitched in that one. Pretty much a gem, uh, quality start, six innings, one and run, seven Ks. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's the the biggest problem that I could see is that we're still struggling to hit with runners in scoring position, which didn't seem like it would be a problem from that opening day series. I mean, we were hitting the ball like crazy. Uh, scoring a lot of runs like crazy. Uh, I think it was the first five games. The Cardinals had ten, at least 10 hits. Um, and then the the offense has just gone quiet, especially with runners in scoring position. You know, we talked about pitching last week, and everybody's talking about pitching, obviously, throughout uh, out the offseason and, and up until now, and worried about the, uh, the pitching and whether or not it's going to be able to perform against bigger teams like Atlanta, like the Brewers, like the Mets, stuff like that. And the pitching can only do so much. I, I mean, you, yeah, you can sit there and bitch about it, but Mon Monty did come out and he had a great start, first quality start of the season. I would argue that the all three of these pitchers pitched really well. Um, it, it, Jack limited the damage to two earned runs. That's good, especially when he's walking six batters again. Uh, I think it was seven in his first start. And yeah. so, uh, and Woodford, you said he he let up how many runs? Three earned um, and four and two-thirds yeah. inning. Three earned. Yeah, hope, wishing that he would go five or six innings, but at the same time, three earned runs is is not a lot. When you got when you, when your team's leaving on base over 30, uh, 30 guys on base, the offense has to pick pick itself up too. Now, like it is it is baseball. The offense gets cold. The pitching gets cold. There's offs and ons. And it's really just a matter of time before this this whole team clicks that I think 
we're, we're just going to start shutting up about it and everything's going to going to go fine. I think the pitching's starting to turn the corner and I hope that going to cores a pitcher friend or a hitter friendly ballpark will kind of get some of these slumps busted and all that different stuff. But I don't know. I was hoping before we talked about each game individually, did you have any thoughts in terms of the state of the team and, uh, and where, where things are going? Yeah, uh, actually I did whenever. So obviously I was in Kansas city and wasn't able to watch the games. And you asked me about, you know, the team doesn't look like they're gelling very much. And I was like, Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, whatever it's early in the season. They got some kinks, whatever. But I will say, man, once I watched that game on Friday, I kind of understood what you were saying because mm-hmm. I don't know. It just seems it seems odd. You know, you're watching Nolan Gorman sprint out a ground ball to second base, and it just seems like after that whole and this will be the last time I mention it, but after the whole press conference with Marmol and O'Neill, it just seems like they kind of got in their heads a little bit. I mean, obviously, you saw Flaherty visually uh, frustrated on the mound and. Um, that's not really like Cardinal baseball, you know, it's like, Mm -hmm. you don't really, you don't want to see Gorman sprinting out ground balls to second base, you know, that's just, that's not what we want, you know, so, um, I don't know to agree with you from last week. Yeah. It just doesn't really seem like this offense is really gelling. It's yeah. Well, it seems like a whole team thing. You know, I, I think, I think at some point it's going to click. I just hope it clicks sooner rather than later. Obviously it just, it, it's a little concerning that going into the season when half the team wasn't even at spring training, the Cardinals had one of the best records in MLB going into the season. And now all of a sudden they're, they're scraping to put wins together. Um, we only have three wins. We're three and six. And it just seems like they, when the pitching's decent, the hitting's just gone. And when the hitting's good, the pitching's not very good. And it doesn't seem like it's really gelling at this point. Um, and that, I mean, can get us into game one. Um, the Cardinals did score four runs, but at, at a certain point, the, the pitching just kind of lost its bearings and, and let up eight. So, yeah, Jack le- uh, it did limit the damage to two earned runs, but um, obviously six more came from somewhere. And the, the team's just not looking good with runners in scoring position. Uh, the tweet that I saw, I can't remember who it was from. Um but pointed out that they were just above 200 when it came to runners in, hitting with runners in scoring position. They left 13 on base in game one. Um, O'Neill showed maximum effort <laughs> by grounding out into, uh, into, I think it was grounding out to second. Um, and he just grounded out with bases loaded. And defense yeah. looked a little sloppy. Um, there were some misplays. That I noticed, I wish I wrote down which ones because now I don't remember. Um, but you know, game one just didn't look like it was like this whole this whole team could be game two of this series the rest of the year. It's just it something needs to click. You know what I mean? Yeah, and honestly, some of that thing is like that clicking feel, like you're saying is we got on top in that second game early right. in the first inning, and that's what. It looks like I think all of our losses, the other team has scored first. So, like, if we can just start scoring early and often, I mean, that, obviously that more runs early and often is going to win you a game. But, like, mm-hmm. if we can just start jumping on the opposing team's pitchers early, then that'll help a lot. But um, I'm just going to point out a few relievers really quick because I know you don't like pitchers. So yeah. I will do the work Yeah, for I don't you. really pay attention to them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, our uh, our bullpen hasn't been great. So besides Zach Thompson, so Zach Thompson has, uh, ha- like I said earlier, has yet to give up a run. Uh, he has gone four and a third with uh, six strikeouts. So he's striking guys out, looking really good. But one guy that was a key piece to last year's team, Andre Pallante, has not looked good at all. He has fi- in five and a third innings, he's got five earned runs, only four strikeouts. Um, I don't have like the ground ball rate or anything like that up, but, uh, yeah, he's just, he's been struggling and obviously so is Jordan Hicks. Jordan Hicks has six run runs in five innings. So, mm-hmm. um, really our, our bullpen has just not looked good at all. Uh, I don't know. Just let my, let my guy Chris Stratton pitch, man. <laughs> just wait. He's what coming. is, I mean, he pitched pretty well. I don't know if he pitched in this series though, did he? Yeah, he did. He just threw a third of an inning scoreless. Yeah. yeah. 
okay, he got out of it right away. Um, yeah. But, I mean, like you said, game two turned a different page. Uh, they were able to score first. I think they scored even in the first inning, which yeah. most teams have been doing to us. Um, we turned around and started doing it to them, and obviously it led to better results. Monty can go out there being assured that he at least has a lead to start the game, and he pitches really well. At seven innings pitched, uh, nine strikeouts off the top of my head, if that's correct. Yep, seven yeah. innings, nine strikeouts. Yeah, and, I mean, and he pitched uh, amazingly. And it, like like I pointed out, the first quality start of the year, um, the offense clicked uh, to where Nolan Arenado hit his 300th home run, which we talked about. Jordan Walker hit his second um, they put up six runs and were able to hold the Brewers to zero, right? Or why am I yep. misremembering yeah, six all zero, this? Yep. Right. So I mean, like like you mentioned, uh, in any any baseball game, if you score first, it's more likely that you're going to keep that lead and and ride the momentum throughout the game. But I mean, this looked like a Cardinals team win, and that's why I said that. When I tweeted out the final score, it just seemed like everything was on the up and up. Uh, they were going into Sunday um, and that they were going to play well. But obviously we saw how that went. But game two, I think, looked like the 2023 Cardinals should look. Um, I, I bet you probably had the same perspective. Oh, yeah, of course. Obviously, I mean, we don't want to lose two to the Brewers in September or anything. Um, we're lucky that it's early in the year. and. I forget the saying. It's like the one who, I don't know, basically the one who has no adversity doesn't do as well as the guy who fall, felt. Yeah, it doesn't prosper down. or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. We're just going through some adversity right now, and it's. I think it'll be fine. I'm I'm really bad with those quotes. I, I <laughs> think I know them in my head, and then I try and say them, and I butcher it every time. But uh, now, like I said, Long season, we'll be just fine. But yeah, right now it's not exactly where we want to be. There's some things to work on. Yeah, and those things to work on are are timely hitting. Again, in in game three, 24 left on base. That's just, I mean, that's pitiful. You you can't, leave, especially when there's bases loaded and no outs, which we said before um, we we started recording. I remember that happening a whole bunch last year. I mean, we would get bases loaded, no outs, and then all of a sudden nobody could get a hit. And it's just, it's frustrating as a fan because you're sitting there, especially when you're 26 years old and you still kind of play the sport and you're like, nobody can hit a baseball now. Yeah. And, uh, and so it's, it's unfortunate. Uh, and it just seems like timely hitting. Hopefully it comes around in a hitter's ballpark. Hopefully some slumps are busted. But there was some regression in game three. And um, and I have a little note here. I'm kind of starting to fall in your camp. I'm I'm questioning Ollie's judgment on a lot of these different either lineups. I know Sunday it's nine games in the season. You give some people off days, whatever. But just some of the decisions he's making don't seem correct just based on how these guys are actually hitting. So in late in the game. Uh, again, I think bases are loaded, or at least they're runners in scoring position. And instead of letting uh, Donovan hit with a lefty coming out of the pin, he brings in Taylor Motter, and Motter quickly gets out, and that ends the inning. And I just don't understand the choice, because even just a couple of games ago, during the play, I'm going to call it the play, where um, – O'Neal got thrown out at home. I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering this collect correctly, that was a lefty lefty situation. Donovan was hitting and, uh, and there was a lefty up and he ropes a single into right field. So just based on what happened a couple of games ago, why are you taking Donovan out? Cause you at least know you're going to get a good at bat. He's going to choose the right pitch to swing at, and he's going to put a good swing on the ball. I, I, I like Motter. We talked about Motter. He's, been very good coming out of spring, but at the same time, I don't see why you go with him or why you don't pick Yepes or Carlson in that situation who have a little bit more experience just even on the Cardinals. But I don't know. What are you, what are your kind of thoughts on, on Ali and, and his decision-making so far? I know you already said last week that you're not very fond of him. Yeah. And I haven't been fond of him for a little bit now. And I like to defend managers. Normally I, I, I don't like to place blame on, 
the front office, the managers, because they are better. Uh, it, it's a lot easier to manage the game from the couch than it is, yeah. you know, right on the sideline. But at the same time, yeah, it, it just feels like he's just trying to do too much. And I think Donovan would have been just fine in that spot. Uh, just, yeah, sometimes you got to have a little bit of an old school thinking of baseball. It's like, okay, Donovan or Mater here. It's like, come on now. Like, we all know Donovan is the better, like, professional hitter. So, mm -hmm. like, if we had a guy like Kyle Farmer, no one really probably knows who that is, but who mashes lefties or something on the bench, then yeah, mm -hmm. great. Put him in. But, like, we don't have a guy that really has yeah. that role right now. There's no track record for Mater. I mean, you're just basing it on whatever analytics you're looking at. And who who knows that that's the right call? Um, it just it still doesn't make sense to me, even though we're um, so far into the analytics age that coaches are going to favor that more than anything. But it's just it's it's pretty frustrating to to watch when you you're just watching the game and you see how these players are taking at bats. And you're and you're like, okay, you're making this change, but it just doesn't make sense based off of what's actually happened in these games. So I don't know. It's unfortunate. Hopefully some of those blunders will stop and uh, and we'll go our merry way. But um, we've exhausted the series wrap up. But I do want to before we go say who my favorite player was of the series. And you can say yours next. Um, and I have to go with Nolan Arenado. Nolan has been um, it's, it still shocks me that he's a Cardinal. I'm going to say it every time I talk about him, but it's been really great to watch him over the last couple of years and watching him hit home run number 300. I'm so happy that he got to do it in a Cardinal uniform. Um, it's just, I don't know, so much better in my opinion. It, it feels like he fits right in with history when he does it. Um, and uh, he didn't just hit a home run. He went five for 11. So he would hit a lot. Uh, he had two walks, two runs scored, and three RBIs. That Those came from the, the home run in game two. Um, but he continues to put forward good at bats. He's always obviously going to have the glove to go with it. Um, and I, I'm just happy that there's a veteran, uh, along with Goldschmidt, he, he's having a really good start to the season too. But that just this veteran base, it, it seems like it's starting to show, at least in the games, Hopefully it can start showing in the clubhouse to kind of gel the team like we've, we've been talking about. But um, I'm glad at least on the field the veterans are still producing to the level that they want to and that they feel like they are. Obviously there was some visible frustration. I think it was in game one from Arenado, even though he had a great series. But, you know, um, I, I just – I it's it seems doom and gloom right now, but I, I think that at least the, the veterans are coming out and – and doing pretty well. Um, I'll I'll shut up for a second so that you can talk about who your uh, who your player of the series is. Yeah, uh, real quick, you talk about the veterans doing well. Uh, Goldschmidt didn't have quite the series that we're used to seeing, but he did have a 948 OPS over the whole season so far. But anyway, besides that point, my player is uh, Jordan Montgomery, mainly because of the position that he put us in to get a winner. You know, they call that the stopper. If you have a pitcher who can, you know, we're in a big rut and you have a starting pitcher who can go out there and do exactly what he did, seven innings, nine strikeouts, and just shut down the other team, that's called a stopper. You know, finally the offense can kind of take a breath. Okay, we, we're not giving up any runs. We can relax. We can hit. Uh, that's kind of the role that Jordan Montgomery played in this series. And if he can continue to do that kind of role, uh, when we are struggling, then that's huge for a team. I mean, that's just a true ace at that point. So, yeah, Jordan Montgomery is my guy here. For sure. Yeah, I, and I, I said it as well on Twitter, and I still don't understand why people are questioning this. I think the starting pitching is starting to turn around. Obviously, I'm going to say that, and the Cardinals are going to play in about 15 minutes, and maybe Steven Matz gets knocked around. But at the same time, from this series, I felt a lot better about the starting pitching, and part of that goes to, or most of that goes to, Jordan Montgomery. I don't think that that's a bad pick at all. Um, and like I said, the Cardinals are going to start playing here in about 15 minutes. Um, I can read off that lineup just because I have it in front of me. So we got Donovan at first today. Burleson's out in left field. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt's taking a, a DH day, so it's kind of a rest day, kind of not. Um Arenado returns to Colorado for the third season now, and he is playing third base. Obviously, Contreras is at 
uh, is at the catching position, which I wish he could stay there throughout the whole season. Um, uh, that's another thing that we didn't talk about is how just uh, Kisner's just an automatic out now, but whatever. <laughs> um, Nolan Gorman is at second base, which is fun. Um, Jordan Walker's out in right field, so still no off day for that kid. Uh, keep it going. Dylan Carlson's in center field, and I couldn't be happier. And Tommy Edmonds playing short with Steven Matz on the bump. So that's the lineup for today's game. And then uh, with Matz on the bump, he's facing Marquez in game one. Uh, Herman Marquez. The um, game two is Miles Michaelis versus Kyle Freeland. And then Flaherty is going up against Urena. Um, do we have Urena's first name? Urena. I think it's Jose Urena or something like Jose? that. Jose? No, so, I don't think it's Jose. Hold on. I mean, that's a good guess. If it's going to be anything, it's probably Jose. Um, yeah, it is Jose or Urena. Yeah, that sounded right anyway. Yeah. Uh, Jack Flaherty and Jose Urena will face off in game three. Um, I'm excited for the series in Colorado. Always good to go to a hitter's ballpark when you're in a rut like the Cardinals are offensively. Um, hopefully there are some uh, upswings, no pun intended, when it comes to the Cardinals playing this series for the beginning of the week. Um, any thoughts about the series that was or the series that's going to be before we get into just a little bit of news from around the league? Uh, yeah, really quick. Uh, just want to say that you should probably bet the overs on all these games, not only because the Cardinals pitchers haven't looked good, but we're in Colorado and the starting pitching for Colorado does not look very good either. Uh, I expect game two tomorrow on Tuesday against the left-handed pitching Kyle Freeland. I just think we're going to go off. I mean, how couldn't we? At that point, if we don't, if our offense isn't clicking, then I don't know what we need to do. A soft throw and lefty, I, I don't know. Yeah. What else are you going to do to get this offense right? Uh, they should just be licking their lips for this series. But, yeah, I don't know. Just uh, excited to watch them here in a little bit. Absolutely. Um, then let's just talk about what happened this week uh, in the NL Central. There was a big injury it came on a play where O'Neill Cruz was running home. Uh, was it a like a pop fly or a um, sack fly situation, or was it just a, a ground ball to the outfield? Do you remember? I don't remember. I just saw the slide. Yeah, the slide that um, I guess was heard around the world. Um, O'Neill Cruz fractured his ankle, and he's going to be out for four months. And there was a big controversy, kind of, about the slide. And uh, I, I just think. Plain and simple, it was a bad slide from O'Neill Cruz. Um, the ball was there before he slid. The ball was there way before he slid because he slid at the last second, and that's the whole reason he got hurt. Um, what's your take on the play? And, I mean, I guess that's a big blow to the, the Pirates. Yeah, it's unfortunate that he's out because I was thinking, uh, I'm going to the game on Friday against the Pirates, and I was like, mm. okay, cool. Like, I'll at least get to see O'Neill Cruz. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Then he gets hurt. But no, the play is just a bad slide. Yeah, there's no intention there. I don't, there's no reason for it to be intentional. Uh, but yeah, there's that big benches clearing brawl. I don't think it's that big, but the bench is cleared. And uh, it was just a weird situation. He just bad slide. Yeah, I'm sure it was just something that was said. But it's funny that you say that because back when was it two years ago, a year ago, when Harper got hit in the face by Henesis Cabrera? I was going to the Phillies series like one of the next games. And I was like, yes, I at least get to see Bryce Harper. Um, I think Bryce Harper's an exciting player. I know a lot of people don't like him, but I was excited to see him. And then he got drilled in the face uh, and I wasn't able to see him. So similar situation, I guess. Uh, but uh, I'm ready to go because I want to watch the game. <laughs> uh, yep. What uh, what else you got? You got anything before we wrap up? No, nope, that's it. Let's get out of here. Absolutely. I didn't ask before, but if you have made it to the end and you haven't already, please subscribe. It helps us out as we continue to cover Cardinals throughout 2023. And if you want to find us anywhere, just look up red underscore jacket club, and I'm sure you'll find us. That's on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Um, we're just sharing Cardinals content throughout the year and hope to share it uh, till the day we die. Um, <laughs> with that, I think, uh, I will wrap up. I appreciate everybody for watching so far and, um, thank you for joining the club. We'll see you next time.